Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly Stevens. I'm the author of the Tanyuan Academy series, and this is English Nerd. It's the season, as you can see with my lights behind me there, to talk about my favorite reads of 2020. Um, over this year, I went through some periods where I was reading all the time, and then other months where I really didn't read at all, and I think that was the case for a lot of us. Um, sometimes we really were in the mood to escape and other times we just didn't have quite that same brain power or the same um, situation that we would normally read. So I always listen to audiobooks when I go on walks and obviously it was uh, sometimes it was cold and I wasn't able to go out and didn't really feel like like reading. So uh, or in the case of me, um, I was busy with teaching as well. That was really overwhelming for for a while, but then I got back into reading and I am set to finish reading about um, 41, 42 books um, this year. So this is a top 10 list. I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. At the end of this video, I'm going to reveal the name of the final installment of the Tanyuan Academy series. So Fury and Rising was first, Into the Unreal was second, and I'm going to let you know what the big finale the final book is going to be at the end. Now, I have a hard time actually categorizing my favorites of things, so please excuse me if um, these are not quite perfectly in the right order. This is like an approximate um, order that, that I enjoyed these, but I read lots of, lots of really great stuff. I wanna start off with some honorable mentions, things that were entertaining but maybe weren't my favorite books of the year. Um, so Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I'm actually still in the middle of that one um, by Lainey Taylor. I like it because it's it's almost like, you know how Doctor Who kind of makes your mind expand with its strange ideas? It might not be like your favorite idea, but it does make your creativity just spark like crazy. Um, I'm finding that to be the case with Lainey Taylor's story about a girl who was raised by monsters but lived in the human world and what happens when she interacts with um, an angel who's kind of her hereditary, her family's hereditary enemy. Um, so that one gets an honorable mention. Uh, the the um, Caraval series, particularly Legendary, that was my favorite, one of the three um, by Stephanie Garber gets another honorable mention as well. I felt like the books were not super well put together. I, I wanted more from the twists and and things like that. It could just be could just be me, um, but it's of course all of them are the story of these girls who get caught up in this kind of real life um, carnival. But it's more than a carnival. It's it's like a game where everybody's an actor except for you, and you kind of have to make your way through this experience alive. <laughs> and uh, and so. That was, that was interesting. And then final honorable mention would go to The Illumini Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I liked the creativity. I particularly liked the first book in the series, Illumini. Gemini, is an, I know, is a lot of people's favorite. It wasn't mine. I did not like the main characters in that. I know, I know. I might get some comments, but I didn't like the main characters in that. And the third one I thought was just okay as well, Obsidio. But the first one was really... Good. Once I once I got into it, it took a little while because I was reading the audiobook, and so you don't get those those um, formatting, um, you know, the, the beauty of the book as it's laid out in print. I think that's the way it's meant to be read. Although the readers, um, the narrators, were very good for that. Okay, so on to the official list. You ready? Um, so coming in at number ten, although that feels kind of unfair, is Supernova. Um, by Marissa Meyer. It's the finale of her her Renegades um, series and I just thought as usual that she wrapped things up really beautifully. It's it's a superhero series about a, a girl who is raised by kind of these, these super villains and then she's supposed to infiltrate this superhero Avengers type organization and what happens when she tries to do that in order to take them down um, but also ends up starting to fall for the son of one of the, the heads of that organization. So I really enjoyed that one. Marissa Meyer comes through again. Okay, number nine is Siege and Storm. I don't actually own most of these books but I'll hold up the ones that I do. 
Um, Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. It's the second book in the Shadow and Bone series and uh, I think it's my favorite even though it is kind of in the middle. I thought that there were some really great um, Darkling scenes but most of the reason that I chose this one was for Nikolai. Nikolai Lansoff is my favorite character in the uh, the Shadow and Bone series and he just shines in this story as um, Alina is trying to find these uh, the ways to augment her power and uh, things like that. So Siege and Storm comes in at number nine. Number eight is Aurora Burning, which is the uh, sequel to the Aurora Rising, um, the Aurora Cycle is the series. It's again by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. It's a a squad book about um, this group of unlikely people. It's a sci-fi story and um, they have to basically save the world but they're they're hardly equipped to do so at all and it's just so fast-paced. It was so fun. I liked I liked the first one better um, but Aurora Burning was was really excellent and I can't wait for the next one. That, the cliffhanger was brutal, just just brutal. So I, I really am looking forward to book three in that series. Um, number seven is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, um, which I thought was a really overreaching title at first. I'm like, oh man, that's, that's uh, going for some sort of book awards, but hopefully it can live up to this title. It's by, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Benjamin Alire Sainz. Um, and it's basically just a coming-of-age story about a guy named Aristotle. He goes by Ari and his uh, friendship with Dante, this boy who lives close by. And, and it was surprisingly moving. It's written really simply, but it was just super, super well put together. Um, I don't read a lot of LGBTQ books. Um, this one is definitely one um, part of the coming-of-age story. It has to do with kind of wrestling with his identity in that way, but it was just so, so well done that it definitely makes this list. Um, number six. Number six is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, um, which is another LGBTQ book. Um, I've read, I've, again, ha don't generally read that many of them, but I've, I read a couple this year, and, and the standouts were Aristotle and Dante, and then Carry On, which is basically like I mean, it, honestly, it read like Harry Potter fan fiction. If everybody was a little bit older, a little bit edgier, and you had some swearing and some some uh, LGBTQ characters, um, so at first I thought this is just kind of a ripoff of Harry Potter, and it is, but it was also just so fun. It was so fun. Um, I really like Simon Snow and uh, Baz Pitch, and I just I enjoyed that very much. Did not love Wayward Son, the sequel. I thought that was a letdown considering what a blast this book was. It just felt like this this book like gave me permission to just have fun with stories. And um, sometimes that can be enough, you know, the, the escapism. So complete blast. Um, next, number five would be um, I'm Still Here. Uh, and it's by Austin Channing Brown. It's that's that's the only nonfiction book that makes this list. Basically, Austin Channing Brown is a black woman, and she's talking about um, living in a world made for whiteness. And uh, so I picked this up around the when the Black Lives Matter movement started, and I'm really really glad I did. I it was so eye opening, and it really made me consider the ways that I had been unintentionally supporting. Um, racist aspects of our society like nobody wants to think well I'm the problem I'm I'm I have racist tendencies um, but you have to start with yourself and you have to acknowledge those areas in yourself where you are part of the problem before anything can begin to get solved I think um, so much of the racist issues persist in our country because nobody's willing to fess up to their own part in it. And so it's, it was a short book and it was just um, very educational for me and it's definitely stuck with me throughout the rest of this year and I hope for years to come as I continue to figure out you know, what this means for me and, and society um, in general. So definitely recommend 
um, I'm still here. It's the the whole title is I'm still here. Black dignity in a world made for whiteness. I believe is the the whole title. But again, very very good. Okay, number four is Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I really enjoyed this first installment. I was not as much of a fan of the second book, The Torch Against the Night, but Ember in the Ashes I really enjoyed. It's a fantasy, another YA fantasy, about a, um, a girl whose family gets attacked by the basically evil empire that is controlling the world. Um, so she's one of the main characters and she's trying to find her brother who's the only survivor of that attack. Um, meanwhile, in the most elite academy of that empire, where they really create these super soldiers um, on their behalf, you have um, the other main character, and it's their interactions, and uh, I, I thought it was it was great. Um, coming in at number three, now all of these all of these numbers are fairly arbitrary, but I think I can say with confidence that these next two absolutely deserve to be at the very top. No matter what mood I'm in or what I've just read, these are two of my new all-time faves. So number three would be Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I know I featured this book in some videos before, um, but it is just absolutely heartbreakingly gorgeous and so weird. I loved this way more than I expected to. I had seen some of the art, you know, with the blue skinned people and I thought, well, that's odd and uh, I, I don't know that I can really relate to it. Try Strange the Dreamer. It is so beautiful. The audiobook in particular was just, just dreamy. So basically it's about this guy named Laszlo Strange. Um, he lives in, in, a, in a YA fantasy world, of course, and he has been obsessed with this, um, this civilization that has essentially disappeared and even the name of it has disappeared and so he's tried to do all this research into this society um, but even with the name gone it's it, it's rather hard and so one day people from that that lost civilization come to the library where he works and this whole adventure ensues with uh, just the most the unlikeliest characters you have these um, gods and goddesses who have different powers and and it is just it's just very meaningful and beautiful so highly recommend um, number two would be the Scorpio races by Maggie Steve Otter. this is another book that I know I've featured before on this channel but uh, definitely one of my favorite reads of this year and in the last few years it's a standalone it's not a series um, it is a YA fantasy, but it's more of a magical realism style, so it's not in a completely separate world like Strange the Dreamer um, or Ember in the Ashes would be. Instead, it is on this British island, um, except on this island every year there are these mythical creatures, these water horses um, called Kapil Ishka that come up um, on the beach and they're, they're uh, carnivorous and dangerous and um, there's a race that happens every year around this time with these really really dangerous horses and so two people who are participating in this race are Sean Kendrick who is kind of an expert with these with these water horses and he's won a few times and then Puck Connolly who's who's brand new to it and she wants to bring her normal horse um, to the race. It doesn't sound like it would be that thrilling at least it didn't sound like that to me um, I don't often pick up a book just because it's about horses or, or anything, but wow, it was it was beautiful. It was moving. At the end of it, I just sat there and and was utterly, utterly blown away. So again, Scorpio races, read it. It's it will it will make a difference in your life. Okay, now as promised, so you you realized this is number one, <laughs> um, but this is this is number one because I finished writing this book. And I am really proud of the way that it turned out. And of course, it has a special place in my heart because it's the, it's mine. You know, it's it's my characters and and the people I care about so much. Um, so the Tanyuan Academy series right now has two books out: Fury and Rising and Into the Unreal. Book three is coming out next year, 2021, and it will be drumroll please, 
Kingdoms on Fire. Kingdoms on Fire is the name of the grand finale. And so you can look for more details about that coming up. I'm, I'm zeroing in on a release date. I just need to make sure that I actually will be able to make that date. Um, right now I'm, I'm working on, I don't know, the second, second, third edit. I'm not really sure it's, it's one of those. <laughs> and once that's all done, then I can start the process of having early readers start to give me feedback and, and then the ball will really be rolling. So Kingdoms on Fire will be the third and final book in that series. I am so excited to share it with you. If you're at all interested in being a beta reader for Kingdoms on Fire, that final book, if you enjoyed um, the first two, then definitely, definitely sign up for my author newsletter because I will let them know um, as soon as I'm ready for betas. I will contact them. They'll be the first line of defense and um, chances are that you'll, you'll be able to do it because I'll have two rounds of, uh, of betas. I really want this to be the best possible ending for you guys. So I want lots and lots of feedback. All right, so that is it. Those are my top 10 books of 2020. Um, did you see any favorites here? If so, put that down below. If one of these was your, your favorite, then let's, let's get other people reading them, you know? Okay, that is all for now. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe for more English nerdy goodness, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye.